Hello, creative friends. My name is Susie, and I am the owner of The Speckled Loon, bringing you inspired decor for your home, cabin, and so much more. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome for the first time. I am so glad you're here. I hope you like what you see, and you'll give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you'll see all of our future videos. Every month, I hop onto YouTube to bring you a new DIY decor kit. We will be making five patriotic themed tiered tray projects with this month's kit. I am offering it in May so you can have it done in time to display for Memorial Day and leave it up through the 4th of July. The link to purchase the kit is in the description box below this video. I have a limited quantity and in the past all of our kits have sold out each month. So if you like these projects, grab one and get crafty with me. If you are just here to watch me craft, that's fine too. So it's that time. Let's get started making our patriotic DIY decor kit from The Speckled Loon. Let's go over everything you're going to receive in your kit. It is going to come to you via USPS in a small box like this with some information at the top. You're going to have each project of the kit will be individually wrapped so you can keep track of all the parts. And you're going to get this little package of bonus decor that's in the lower right hand corner of pre-painted decor. You're also going to get a little bonus pack of unpainted stars as well. The projects in this kit are the patriotic truck that comes with a little stand, the fireworks sign that comes with the stand as well, the pendant banner that comes with beads and string, the USA sign that comes with the little stand, and then the gnome garland. And you've got everything here to get ready to make your patriotic kit. You are gonna need just a few supplies to complete your project, mainly paint and glue. I used the Waverly brand chalk paint from Walmart in the colors of crimson red, ocean blue, and then white. And I also had a black and a brown that I used. If you can't find or don't want to use chalk paint, you can also use the two ounce acrylic paint. You will just need more coats than the chalk paint because it just goes on a bit thinner. You will also want some tape, probably a small piece of cellophane and a little bit of painter's tape and you will need for cleanup some baby wipes and some toothpicks and q-tips for general cleanup as well a sponge brush or two for each color you will want maybe a fine art brush for your smaller pieces or even a makeup sponge is okay to apply your paint with you'll need some glue this is the super glue from the dollar tree that's a gel or you can go ahead and use the Starbond glue like I am. The link will be down below. Also for painting, you could use acrylic paint markers. You could get them at the Dollar Tree or any craft store. I ordered these online from Arteza. The link will be in the description box below. These are the ones, they come in a big 40 pack, so you have every color. You'll also want some scissors for cutting ribbon and string. And then these little clamps are fantastic. For holding your glue pieces together if you decide to use wood glue and it takes a little longer to set up and I'll be showing you how to use those in the video. I'm going to show you the techniques that you need to paint all the components of your kit. I'm not going to show me painting every little item because we do the same thing for everything. I'm going to show you how to paint one big piece and a couple of smaller pieces. For the smaller pieces, just a tip, is to take a piece of painter, painter's tape and tape it down sticky side up to hold your small pieces to get your hands free so you don't have to touch your piece while you're painting it. Here's how I use the markers. I'm using the black marker here in a pinch. You could use a sharpie, but get to get a good true black, the paint marker works best. And then you can go ahead and use a small art brush or a marker on these small things like this star. I just take my paint, shake it up, take the lid off, and just take paint right out of the lid when you just need a little bit. And I'm using a small art brush and just painting the very top. You can also use these little makeup sponges from the dollar store and just dab your paint on that way too. And those are how I paint the small items. Then when they're ready to go, 
you can just take them off the tape and glue them down to your project. For the gnome, I have painted the front already, so I'm just going to show you how to paint the back because he is reversible, so we need both sides painted. I start in the middle with a small amount on my brush. I always do two coats with these um, lighter colors anyway. So I just start in the middle and kind of go in every direction. The chalk paint absorbs up nice you, and the foam brush gets you barely any brush strokes at all. Then if I get any on the sides, I take a wet baby wipe and just kind of wipe that off because we're going to be laying layering pieces so I don't like a lot of excess paint on the sides. And then when I am not using the brush, I will wrap it up in a wet baby wipe to keep it from drying out or you could use saran wrap as well. And that's how you paint all the items in your kit. Now let's get to assembling our projects. Let's dive in to the first project of our kit, which is the USA mini sign. And this is what it looks like all unpainted. You have the backer, the three letters, and the small little cube that's gonna serve as our kickstand. That's what it looks like painted. And this is what it looks like all put together with the little cube attached on the back. We are going to go ahead and paint it. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you some up close in a minute. But I did do the white with a brush on the backer. I did two coats of that. And the red and blue, I believe I did two coats as well with a small art brush on each one. You can also use, of course, your sponge dauber as well or a marker. A marker works perfect for this. And I did the ocean blue on the U with the little stars. And I'm going to show you how the S goes too. It looks like it could go either way, but it's going to want to have the notches, the small little notches at the top. And how I have the S on this sign is how it's going to go. You can see it up close there. I use my Starbond glue. You could use your wood glue or your super glue. If you use wood glue, you're going to want your clamps. I like to do a dry fit first. So I'm doing a approximation where I want everything according to how that outline is. You'll see there's a specific spot where the U goes and the A goes. Then I just place the S directly in the middle of those, trying to line it up so it's as straight as possible. And to keep them without moving, I'm just taking a piece of painter's tape over the S and the A and just securing them down. And then the U I'm going to take off. I am going to just eyeball it when I put it back on and line it up there with that little notch up at the top, kind of, so I have an even outline and it's straight with the S and the A. Then after pressing that down and letting it set, I'm going to take the tape off the A and same thing, I'm going to put a little bit of glue all over the back, line it up with that notch kind of in the lower right and make sure I'm even at the top of the bottom with the U and the S and then repeating the process with the S right in the middle and you see where those little notches at the top, how the S goes. That is how the S should be right side up that, that way. And that is what the S looks like. Now to attach the little block, I go just a fingernails width up from the bottom. So it will just lean back ever so slightly. I take the smallest bit of glue and just go all over the back of that block. And then I line it up in the middle, right just a little bit above the bottom and then press down firmly, make sure it's good and straight. There we go. And press it and then it is ready to sit for display. And it holds up rather nicely. And that is our finished USA Mini Sign. Project one is complete. Our next project is the Fireworks Round Mini Sign. This sign comes um, unfinished like all of ours and you can see it's got the backer and the matching frame and then the rockets and the starburst and a stand. The backer has small etched in design so you can line up the rockets and the stars in there and the frame um, just everything gets glued on. The small little starburst, the three things at the top, they actually have an adhesive backing on them to make it very easy for you to apply them with no mess and no glue oozing out. So the first thing you do is we do two coats of paint on that backer because I did the white and that covers up those markings but they do faintly remain so you can still go ahead and line everything up 
no problem with um, those lines. I did white on the back, did ocean blue on the rocket and the middle star and red on everything else. You can use your markers on the smaller items. You can use your small art brush. You can use your sponge. However is easiest for you to paint. The first thing we're gonna do is glue on that frame. Um, it's easier to just put the frame on right away. And so I like to get the glue on and around in very small dabs. And then I like to have it on a flat surface and line it up. Then I use my little clamps to clamp it down. It just makes it a little bit easier um, for it to set. Once you are ready to glue on your rockets, you wanna look for your outline and you probably have to move your clamps a little bit so you can um, not have them interfere with what you wanna glue. I have my little outline there. I like to do a dry fit before I apply any glue to just make sure I've got everything lined up correctly. And I go ahead and I apply the glue to the back of my rocket. I really like the fine applicator tip I get there with that glue, that Starbond glue. Again, that's in the link below if you are interested in it. Otherwise, you can get uh, the Dollar Tree stuff with a little applicator tip or put it on with a Q-tip too or a toothpick to get just little dabs of it. Um, I'm researching some other things and I'll show you those in future kits on different ways to apply glue without getting any seepage. But I'm just lining up the second rocket and getting that a good press down and I'll take a clip and just do it on the bottom. The clip, the little clamps are short. They don't reach the top of the rockets. So now I'm going to off camera remove that adhesive. I've got really bad eyes. So I need to get like right in there and <laughs> I don't want my head in the shot. So I'm just off camera getting that adhesive off. And then I am just lining up the middle one first. And then I am going to do the two um, little starbursts after that. Again, they have an adhesive as well. And I'm just going to, before I lay them down permanently, I kind of get them lined up and then I give them a good press once I have them in their marked spot for each one. And then once you get all that done, this sign is complete and made. You can remove your clamps. And then this does come with a little stand. It's over there. It's a two piece slotted stand. You just put the top and the bottom together to display your sign on your tiered tray or accent shelf. Our next project is this adorable Stars and Stripes pendant banner. It is five pendant bases and five overlays, a set of corresponding beads and string. And this is what it looks like once it's all painted, glued, and strung together with the beads and string. The first thing we are going to do is get our bases painted and then attach the overlays. So I painted the bases the white with a foam brush. And then I did the overlays. Um, I used the sponge dab method or the markers, whichever worked best for the designs. There you can do a crimson red, or blue for the stripes, or excuse me, red for the stripes and blue for the stars. And once I have them all painted, I did do two coats with the white, you will want to glue your bases to the overlays. And you can see how the overlay fits perfectly toward that it lines up with the bottom tip of the base, and leaving your holes exposed for stringing the beads. So. We're going to go ahead and get glue on our first one. I will show you how to do it on one and then we will um, jump to the end where I have them all glued together because it's the same exact steps five times over. So I get glue on and then I line it up on the straight edge of the table to make sure I have everything nice and straight. And I just let a little clip hold them together, clamp. And then once they are all glued, I take the clamps off and I'm just putting a little bit of tape at the end of my string, the one that is not the looped end, it's the two pieces together. And I also taped in a toothpick and I don't put the first bead on, I leave that for later and I leave quite a good length of bit, um, string at the end and I go th through the first hole, back behind the banner, up through the second hole, and then I string on the bead that is the spacer between the two pendants. And I just repeat this to the very end. Here I'm doing the last one. I'm going down through the first hole, up through the second hole, 
and then I am stringing on this last bead. And I have this one slowed down so you can see it up close how I'm doing it. Now the next thing that I want to do is go back and string on my first bead. So I'm just taking that toothpick I have and I'm just using it to help poke it through that looped end. And I have that through and then I am going to take the red bead and put it right back toward the front. Now what I'm doing here is I'm keeping that looped end because I want to use the loop to have it to hang on my tray. I'll use a magnetic hook or sometimes I will just tape it to the tray if there's nowhere to hook it. But for a metal tray that looks great um, um, with a magnetic hook. But what I'm doing here is I just made a double knot to secure that bead so it will not slip off. And I have a nice long loop. And then on the other end, I'm just going to snip off that piece of tape. I'm going to make a double knot at the base of that blue bead. Once I have that knot made, then I want to have a bit of a loop. So I go up a few inches and just make a double knot at the end there. And then I'm going to cut off that excess. And then I have a loop either side of my pendant and it is ready for you to hang on your display with the rest of our patriotic items. And our pendant banner is complete. Our next project is this adorable patriotic truck that has items that can be interchanged in the truck bed. It comes with a base, a frame, the little red truck, um, and then a spacer so we can put things in and out of that bed rail. The little rockets are part of your pre-painted decor pack. You can take the extra stars and decorate the frame however you want. Also comes with a little stand for you to slide together and makes it easy to display your sign with the rest of your items. So we are going to get busy painting. We did the back with two coats of white again and use that brush and then for my smaller items again I either used a marker or a small art brush or a sponge dauber. I did red on the truck. We used our marker on the wheels which have the adhesive backing. Then we've got the spacer and bed rail I did in brown and then I did the rest of the stars alternating between red and blue. And I didn't do any many stars in white because the background's white white and I wanted them to stand out. So I like to do a dry fit with the frame just to make sure. And I go ahead and I get my glue all around the frame just like we have on our other projects. And then I have the frame in my left hand and the base in my right. And I go ahead and line them up together. And again, using the table, I do the one side and I turn it over and do the other side. And then once I have it good and lined up I adhere it and I take my clips and I put one basically in each corner and then once that is dry we're going to go ahead and do our truck and wheels and get those on. So how I like to do that is I get all the clips off and I take my truck and my wheels put the wheels so they touch the bottom of the frame there and then figure out how, where I want my truck and then I tape it down so it won't move out of place. And I take each wheel and I remove the adhesive backing and just press that down with my finger really hard. And I repeat the process on the other wheel. Then I remove the tape and I go ahead and get my glue on the back of the truck. Being generous in that middle part there and then trying to get each edge so it will stay down nice and firm. And then I just rest it back over those wheels and give it a good press. And the next thing I'm going to do is get that little spacer on there. That's that little straight piece. And you're going to go ahead and put a few drops of glue on that. And that's gonna rest right on top of that truck bed. And then you wanna take your bed rail and we are only going to put glue on that bottom rung of the rail. And that is going to rest right atop of the spacer there. So that's going to give it extra space. I just have that star in there. So I have something to kind of press and hold it when I'm doing my initial set so it won't collapse forward. And then I can remove the star and I'm going to lift this up so you can kind of see what it looks like 
from the side with the spacing. It's hard to show on camera, but you'll see, I'll turn it and you can see how that sticks up and now we have that space to put in our elements, whether it be our stars, our rockets, or whatever. So feel free to go ahead and decorate it however you want. Again, you can take those extra stars, put them, you know, in the bed, or you can put them on the frame. You can use the rockets. You could glue one of the stars up in the upper right hand corner of the frame if you want, like this red one, however you want. But your um, patriotic truck is ready to roll. Our next project is this reversible gnome and patriotic garland. You will get everything here to make this two-sided gnome. And one side is going to have a star's hat, the other side a stripe. And then you are going to see that he just spins on the end of that garland and you can display whatever side you like. Also, what comes in these little envelopes are the noses. And the hands, they're very similar in size, so I separated them out for you so you know which is which. There's two noses, one for each side, and then four hands, two for each side. And those that you will get um, will have an adhesive backing. You'll see me gluing mine on. Mine didn't have the adhesive backing, but I made them have the adhesive backing for you. So that, <clears throat> excuse me, so that they are easier to apply. So the other thing you get is an assortment of beads, red, white, and blue, and some decorative ones, and then a tassel that's red, white, red, white, and blue, and has the string attached. So let's get started painting and assembling our gnome. I did the base, you do both sides, and on the front side is where the red hat is going to go, and on the back side is the blue. I used either markers or sponge dabbers on the small things, and I like to do a dry fit of the hats just to make sure I have them on the right side and everything looks correct. And I'm just doing a dry fit here of the red one. And yours, again, will have the adhesive backing. Mine do not. You'll see me gluing. You will not need to use glue on your noses and hands, just on the hats and the little elements that they hold. That is how those go. And once you have your dry fit all done, I like to do the blue side first just because the hands on that one need to go a little lower and then we are going to space our other hands on the other side over. So I'm going ahead and I am gluing the hat on first and I want to make sure I have it lined up nice with the curves there and everything and make sure that that hole is still exposed at the top before stringing our garland through. Now, if you make a boo-boo and you have some white paint on the sides, like I did, you can go ahead and take your black marker and a Sharpie will work on this too and just run it along the edge there and that gets rid of any white that would have lopped over the sides. So now I'm taking the nose, I'm gluing mine on. Again, yours is adhesive. You just need to remove your adhesive backing and then press it right into that little dent in the hat that is made for the gnome. I like the star to just, the tip of it to just be below the nose. It's very easy to center. And I put a little bit of glue on that star and a bit on the hands. And then I line it up where I want it on the gnome. And then I'm going to get to work on the other side before I put the hands on. That way I have a nice flat surface. So I'm gluing the stripes hat on now, the red one. And again, I'm just getting my hands there and lining it up as best as I can. If you're a little off, no worries. And then next, I'm gluing on my nose. Again, yours will have the adhesive backing. And I use the color hazelnut on my nose and hands. You could leave them unpainted if you want them lighter. If you want them darker, you could use a darker brown. Or if you had something flesh colored, that would work as well. I did not have anything flesh colored, so I just used this hazelnut. I thought that was close enough to what I wanted. And I'm just lining up those hands right on the little oval parts there. And you can see how adorable he's coming together so nicely. And then I will flip over and get the hands on the blue side. And then your gnome is going to be complete. And then we are going to 
get ready to start stringing our beads or our garland. And he is done. Look at him, he's so cute. Okay, I don't know which side I like better. So let's line up our beads. How you're going to do your beads, this is how I did mine. You can do any order you want. But you want to use those two big white beads that come with as anchors. They are going to go one at the very base of the top of the tassel and the other at the other end. They just serve as a nice weight so your um, beaded garland will hang nicely. And you, you just need to take a little piece of tape and tape the end. I use cellophane tape because the little flag and star beads that are at the bottom there, they um, have very tiny holes and the painter's tape is too big for them. But I did a course of red, white, blue, red, white, blue, and then an accent bead. And then at the very end, I've got those big white beads again. So I'm going to take have a toothpick handy. So if any bead um, is hard to get the string through, I can feed it through with the toothpick. And I'm going to do my large bead. And then my red. Now I'll get one course all strung on here. And I apologize for being a bit out of frame. I wasn't paying attention to my camera when I was getting these strung on. So here is the red, white, and blue. One more red, white, and blue. And then I'm going to put on that little flag accent bead. And I hope you like these painted and accent beads. I search around to find some cute things every month and I really liked how this set came together. I think the little tassels are really cute too. So that's what it looks like with one course of beads. And we've got the second course, the third course, the fourth course, and the last one ending up with that large white bead on that end. All right, now it's time to attach our gnome. So I'll zoom in here. And first, I like to come up through the bottom and bring it all the way as close as I can to that white bead. And then I feed it the string behind. And then I am going to come through the very front of the gnome in that hole. And then I am going to feed this back up through the first two beads there, that large white one and then that blue one. And the reason I do this is so we can tie a knot and then hide it inside the bead so you won't have any raw edges or string edges hanging out. So there's through the white one. Now I am going to string it through the blue one. Once I get it through the blue one, I will pull tight. I will cut off the excess so I've got enough to work with. And I'm going to bring it around and just do one tie in the back. Pull it tight and then tie in the front. Pull it tight and do a double knot. And then I am going to snip off the excess and I'm going to slide those beads up to cover the knot. Then to make sure that stays in place, I'm going to take the ribbon. Yours might be a little different, but everybody gets a piece of ribbon. And then I do one tie, I feed it through the hole at the top. And then I'm going to do a, another knot at the top. And what this does is it just kind of hides the string and gives it a nice finished look. If there's any fraying on your edges, you can go ahead and cut those off or if you want to angle them. It's a good pair of sharp scissors and then your gnome garland is complete and you decide what you like better, the red side or the blue side. I love them both. Creative friends, we have made it to the end. All our projects are complete. Let's take a look at all of them together. We've got the fireworks sign. We have the little USA sign, the patriotic truck, the pendant banner, and of course, our adorable reversible gnome garland. I love them all so much. I hope you do too. Let me know down below in the comments which one you like the best. And I will be back in another month with another tiered tray. Here's a look of them all together on this tiered tray, but I'll have another kit next month. In the meantime, if you want this one, links are down below. Quantity is limited, so if you want one, grab one today.
And if you have any questions, reach out to me. Otherwise, let's let's let the music play and enjoy the final project. Thanks so much and see you on the next video. Bye for now.